Great. This is the Loving Waters Connection Call, our monthly new moon call. And today is November 7th. And uh, we have on here Charlie Riverman, Deborah from Colorado at the moment, and myself, Elizabeth. And Shelly is here in spirit. You see her beautiful face. Um, and just for those that may be listening, uh, Loving Waters is a growing community of water advocates working to unify and connect and inspire and educate fellow humans as to remembering and, and, and realizing our sacred relationship with water, knowing that in that simple action, we're revitalizing not just ourselves, but the waters of the world as well. And we meet every new moon for this call where we can really support each other and help us realize that we're not doing this alone, that, that there's a lot of people doing this. And the more we can work together, the more impact I think we have. And then once a month on the full moon, we encourage people to gather for a water gratitude gathering, either alone or with others or with your whole community, whatever. We encourage community gatherings, for sure, to stand on the shores of your own watershed and, and give thanks in person, in spirit, to the water that sustains you in your life right where you are. And uh, we also have a website and you can go to the website and register. Give us your address, email address, and if you wish, we'll put you on an email list that gets sent a monthly newsletter. And that just tells what we're what we're up to and and what other people are up to and issues if they need to be mentioned and so that's pretty it much it for loving waters we have a council of wonderful water stewards and um and a facebook social media presence as well um Charlie, would you like to do a water resonance for us and bring us into our internal watersheds? I'm sure I'd be glad to. It's, uh, um, I'm Charlie Riverman Bergeron, and I live in uh, York, Maine. And um, my watershed is the Mount Agamenicus watershed, which uh, the prime, my prayer and primary river is the York River, which I live pretty close to, um, just a couple of houses away from the, the amazing <clears throat> flow that trickles down off the uh, mountain, which is a small one, but an ancient one. And um, so uh, welcome to Loving Waters and our new moon call. Uh, want to just ask each of you to deepen your breath and slow it down to really feel the water as you inhale and it begins to evaporate and as you exhale and you can feel the water flowing out into the atmosphere. We are water beings and there is no separation between the water and our existence. Much like all of life here on planet Earth, 
And we've come to this wonderful place where everyone is beginning to understand at a deeper level the importance of the water. And so I ask, just reach into your own heart, knowing that the rivers of your body are much like the rivers on Mother Earth. They flow with important messages, information, nourishment, all trying to keep us sustainable, alive, functioning. And we ask that all of humanity begin to tap into this wonderful field of water that is beyond just the touch, beyond just the word, beyond just the lovely vision and playground it provides for us. This oneness with water is not an idle moment. It is the beginning of returning home, returning to love, returning to embrace each other in unity and compassion. The river can teach us so many things and the water is always carrying us. So on these full moon or these new moon calls, we ask each of you to de deepen your relationship to the water, to the work that you're doing and, and share with others this amazing relationship that each of you have with water. So many people are not aware. And it's our responsibility as water guardians, water stewards, water protectors, water lovers, to come from the water within us and share the love, the joy, and the wonderful enthusiasm we have to keep it clean, to keep it functioning, to keep it contained so that it provides sustenance and life for all life forms. Feel that water. Know that you are the ones who have chosen to come here and be a part of this amazing transition in the relationship between humanity and water. And as Dr. Emoto so gratefully left us these amazing simple statements, I say these now to the water within you. I love you. I thank you, I respect you, and welcome to the new moon call of Loving Waters. I'm complete, thank you. Thank you, Charlie. I'm gonna su suggest just a moment of sitting in the silence to really let those profound words resonate and sink into ourselves to greet the water inside. And as we do, let us embrace the, our atmosphere, our air, the sunshine, the ground beneath our feet. 
sky above. Center of the earth. As we step into the sharing part of our call, we ask us to embrace water, source water. It's one of the primary intelligence in the universe. And as we begin to speak that we just hold a hold a pledge a pledge asking asking our source of life how may we serve you today how may we serve you this week how may we serve you moving forward for the future generations. Loving Waters has created a pledge and share here on the screen for a minute. You can see it. I'm going to read it here. I pledge called the Water First Pledge. I pledge to put water first in my life, to respect, appreciate, and cherish water as a sacred source of all life and a primary intelligent presence on earth. Knowing that 99% of the number of molecules in my body are water molecules, I pledge to keep my own inner water pure by choosing positive thoughts, words, emotions, and nutrition. Joining with others, I pledge to con conserve, protect, and sustain the integrity of my local watersheds and all bodies of water on the planet. I pledge to share my love of water with my family and community, to continue educating myself and others in ways to ensure the purity and vitality of water for future generations. And this is going to be made into a postcard. that can be downloaded off our website. And for the use of anybody that wishes to love their water. And recognizing that we are water. Remembering water as life. So with that, I have the crystalline, no, crystalline water <laughs> in the earthen bowl and open it up for you, Charlie, or Deborah, to, to share your, how water is speaking through you in this moment here. Yeah. 
Well, I'll go ahead and um, my dog is barking in the background. So that's what water is doing for her. It's running through her body, making her bark. <laughs> so I need to let it flow. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, she's um, and she's a part Labrador retriever. So she loves the water. And uh, it's always a joy to uh, go to the water and let her as she just plays in the water. And uh, as we all did when we were much younger, uh, as we get older, we don't seem to play as much more. And I thought about that today as, uh, as I was working beside a, um, it's a reservoir. It's called the Bellamy Reservoir in New Hampshire. And um, we're working building this large deck, but when you look out over the water, the level of water here in New England is extremely high. And it's been a, a blessed season of, of rain and water to the point where um, it, this, it, it's filled the reservoir to a point where I, I believe they're going to probably have to release some. And I thought, wow, there are so many people in this world who are not having that abundance. And wouldn't it be nice if we could somehow figure it a, a way to be able to take that abundance and, and share it with those who don't. And I know in our hearts, we all want that. Uh, and so as I embraced the water, I realized that there's also those times when um, we are in those droughts and uh, we have to, uh, preserve what little water we have. And it was the, that flow, that ebb and flow of water um, that meant to me today was how balance is really necessary in the water, the blessings we do, um, the water work we do, whether it's preservation, conservation, or um, just stopping the abuse of it. Um, balance, bring back some balance. And instead of, as we all know, not using it as a commodity, but the true natural flow of life that everything relies on. So it was an abundant day for me with water. And, uh, and that was my first thought was, oh, it's, there's too much. And I stopped that thought. I says, no, don't, don't think that. It's beautiful. It's, it's abundance. Be thankful and know and send some of that abundance consciously to those around the world that are not enjoying that abundance. So again, with the water work that I do and the blessings that I do, every time I'm near the water, I learn something new, and a new way of looking at it or working with it or uh, sharing it with others, um, as we said in the beginning, with esoterically or spiritually, and knowing that they receive it they receive it. And so that's what, when I come here tonight, that's what I'm, I've left that beautiful body of water. Um, with the sun, we, we haven't, we've had rain for probably hmm, off and on for five to seven days. And to see the sun this morning was glorious, but I never once said, stop raining <laughs> and I, I've been working outside building a deck so you need at this time of year all of the um, warm days you can do to to do that but I never once said no don't stop raining thank you thank you so with that I'm complete and I just share that with everybody to you know for each for each everybody's listening and who's on the call it's just to you know find those moments in your life where uh, water just pops up and, you know, we so many of us have taken it for granted for so long and just say thank you. Be really thankful for 
all that the water has to offer. So with that, I'm complete and um, thank you. I pass the uh, crystalline water bowl or the crystalline water hmm. to Deborah, if you would like to, to share with us some of what you're doing with water. Sure. Or... Well, I'll just tell, I, I like to talk story just a little bit. And, um, so um, I, I have a real strong personal kinesthetic relationship with water and I'm a swimmer and a surfer. Mm. And in the past couple of months, I've injured my shoulder. And it's, it's been heartbreaking for me and, um, to not be able to swim as I'm used to. And I, so I've had to work with this. And two days ago, I just said, forget it. I'm just going to go get in the pool. and. Um, I'm, I'm just going to swim. And so I did. And, you know, there were certain things I couldn't do, but afterwards I felt so much better. And I recognized that I really need to just get in the water no matter what. And that's, that's the basis of my relationship with water, actually. Um, and yesterday I went and I did an aqua fit class. It was the same thing. I just have to go get in the water. And I do some of my water healing in, in pools. It's, it's interesting to, you know, speak with the water and um, apologize to the water for the fact that we've put all these chemicals in the water in order to make it such that we supposedly can swim and be in this water, many of us in the same body of water. And, and that's a that's a very interesting conversation that I I get to have. Um, so that's that's one of my current experiences with water. Um, and then I'll just share this experience I had when I was when I was working with the Big Muddy, the Missouri River this fall. There was this eco arts festival that was happening down at Cooper's Landing, and they were taking people out on the river in a in a boat, and I was so excited because I'd been doing water healing work on the banks, and the big muddy is a very powerful uh, river, and she has a current. And it was like, there were times when she would just try to grab me and pull me into her. So I was really excited to be able to go out and actually be on, on the river. And she has, I, I do a lot of work with uh, twisted copper with uh, sacred geometry uh, structuring tools in water. So I had spoken to the captain and told him a little bit about the work that I do. And we went out on the river and it was a large group of people, some from other countries. And I was, I had my water tools in the water as, as we were uh, going upstream, actually up river. And we picked up trash and on the way back, he asked me to, you know, tell the people in the boat what I was doing. And it was just such a wonderful opportunity for me because I got to share that work. I got to share how resonance and speaking with water and Dr. Amato's work. And um, I had people come up and ask me questions afterwards. And I was so grateful for that opportunity um, to actually share that awareness of water. And um, yeah, I think that's kind of what I have to share. Oh, I guess the other piece is here in Colorado right now, it's interesting. There is this sense of, and this is a little bit like what Charlie was speaking of in terms of ebb and flow. There's a little bit of almost a sense of feast or famine with regards to it's either really dry it's it's more dry than not and then you know we will get the gift of water falling from the heavens 
Mm, and um, it's an it's such an interesting time to be alive on this planet right now. Um, yeah, the light and you know the water here sometimes and not visible other times. The sense of gratitude is so important. And thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm happy to be here. And I will put the crystalline form of water in the center of the circle. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Deborah. Can I ask you how long you've been um, awakened to water as a sacred being? Oh, it's been a really long time. I mean, because I have this, you know, I have a really intimate relationship with water. Um, I have a picture of my myself when I was like one year old uh, down in Galveston, Texas. And I think my parents had to chase me because I was just whoop, <laughs> into into the Gulf right there. So I, I couldn't say, you know, in terms of sharing it, I, I, it's, it's always been with me. I came mm-hmm. out of the water. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. And, and as sort of an active water faithful, is my my term for for this community of of water lovers, the water faithful, in terms of really actively doing blessings and 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 speaking about it and and having that be part of what you communicate to the world. Um, uh, I would probably say that that piece of my work. Um, has been maybe seven years. I mean, it, it's kind of funny because basically it 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 happened uh, in a more mm, consciously formed way, I guess, after I met other people who mm-hmm. were doing what I had kind of always been doing. And so I began to do it with other people um, for a while. Mm-hmm. And and then and then finding and I was actually in Delray Beach in Florida probably five six years ago, doing some work with some people there. And then a few years ago, I think I found the Loving Waters call somehow through Facebook. Mm-hmm. I think I cried the first time I called in because mm-hmm. I was so I was so grateful to find to know that there were other people. That we're actually doing this work. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't know if that tells you anything, but it it does. Yeah, it does. And I and I lived in Hawaii, and you know, I've lived I've lived a lot of, on a lot of, near a lot of different bodies of water. In fact, it's one of the determining factors for me. However, yeah. I have discovered that, like, actually, even going to Tucson. The reason I always end up leaving is because there's not enough water above the ground for me there. But there's really powerful people down there. And um, I'm being called back down there again. So we'll see what happens mm-hmm. next. And and there, because the cycle of of drought has so changed because of the eastern Pacific storms, because of the hur- all the hurricanes that have happened off the... Um, West Coast of Mexico, um, and it's bringing water up into the desert, and so it's actually changing. And those rivers, there are rivers in Tucson that are now underground rivers, but used to run above ground. So, you know, it's a combination of water management, of course, that affects that and creates that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like it's going to be interesting this time around. Beautiful. Um, well, I was just curious, Charlie. How about you? Um, how? Um, what's the time frame for? Wow. Well, yeah. Your intentional water work. <laughs> well, <laughs> that. I, mean, that, I know you got the name Riverman long ago. Well, the name, yeah, the Riverman name came. Uh, well, that was, um, yeah, that was an interesting 
uh, it it wasn't so much about water; it was about energy. But when and uh, the name the name came about because I I died and or what they call near death experience and came back, and so I was I was guided to. Um, present to, to make some uh, bumper stickers which is an interesting story but the woman um, basically told her friend who was fearful of me to place her hands in my hands and uh, said to me um, I want you to she says what do you feel and she says it's like a river and and she and so the woman said I want you I want to introduce you to river man <laughs> I, I, I've been waiting for him to appear and at the time I had no conscious clue because uh, my uh, pre previous life before death was one of a very um, basic life um, but as you spoke Deborah you took me back to my childhood and uh, I remember everywhere I went had something to do with water. I grew up in Boston and there was a, a place where you would go and swim in the summertime and it was called the Frog Pond and I basically lived there. Uh, and then there was the Charles River which was polluted. And I always felt bad because there were dead fish floating and it wasn't, didn't smell nice. And, and I got an opportunity two, two years ago to go and do a river blessing there and uh, witness how um, in 40, 50 years, whatever it's been, 60 years, uh, how much better the river had become. There was still trash, there were still dead fish along the side, there was still a signpost of some uh, effluent pipe going into the, into the river, which bothered me, but it renewed my faith in the fact that um, we can clean this up and it, it you know so river f and water for me has has always been part of my life I was in my other life I was born in Pisces and of course we come through the womb and as I now delve into my sort of um, I'll share it my galactic self I realize that much of the waters here on earth came from across the galaxies and uh, many of us will have recollections of that and uh, this is what has brought many of us here to this point where uh, we are doing this work and so Deborah I, I noticed you said something about um, working with um, I don't know, my brain is a little fuzzy but um, geometric uh, figures, etc. And I was guided to work with the water with um, star tetrahedrons and triads. And um, that work began uh, in earnest, um, what was it, two, three years ago. And it was a profound experience to, I had worked with geometric shapes on land uh, but to do it with the water was just really profound. So I, my work is with crystals and uh, I work with crystals from Arkansas and I create mm -hmm. star tetrahedrons in the bodies of the water when I do a blessing. And uh, so it's actually, uh, and I'll share this, it's inviting the divine mother and the divine father to come back to return into the essence of the water and return the water to its original blueprint. So it's a profound experience. Um, and it feels to me like I've, I've always done this in many lifetimes on some level. Um, I, so that's how, yeah, when we look at water, how it, um, what it means to us. I always share to people with people that it, we don't have to be elaborate, just to be simple and just learn to, to remind ourselves that everything relies on water here, that it, how precious it is. And as you said, Deborah, um, when you get to talk to people on that boat, I'm, I'm always amazed at how many people look at me and 
it's like all of a sudden they finally get it. <laughs> it's like, and, and much like us, you know, sometimes we just go into this place of forgetfulness and we just need somebody to gently remind us. And this is what I, why I'm here at Loving Waters is it's about the love. It's about loving water. There's so many wonderful people who are, you know, protesting, act, being active on the ground and protectors. And, and, but here at Loving Waters, that's really what we do is hold the space for the love of water. And uh, we become the container for that. So I guess with that's why we complete. I didn't know I was going to go through all of that, Elizabeth, but that's okay. It's a beautiful share. Um, I love to share the joy that I get from working with water in any form. And it's mm -hmm. from the water in my glass <laughs> to, to the water in my, my fish bottle, <laughs> which I, I collect and bless every day and, and then return to the water. So yeah, it's, uh, it's fun and it's been a joy to meet um, other people who are doing similar work. So thank you, Deborah, for sharing your, uh, your part of uh, working with uh, geometric patterns, et cetera. Maybe you could share some of that with, with us if you, if you so desire. With that, I'm complete, thank you. I'll just, I'll just real quickly say that, you know, I, I feel like I'm in my greatest alignment when I'm doing water healing. And it doesn't, I mean, I, I'm just like, I'm in a no thought space and um, I'm fully integrated and uh, I have no greater joy and my life is kind of, oh, I don't know, it's, I don't know what it is right now, but whenever I go and I do water healing, I'm completely aligned. So um, I, I so appreciate it for that. And I agree with keeping it simple. And um, there's just some different copper tools that I use and I actually put configurations kind of similar and I also use crystals too. Uh, in the water, and then a lot of different vibrational things. But I would love to hear Elizabeth's tale of entering the water world. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Deborah, for, for that invitation. Uh, like like the two of you, uh, I I've always felt fluid. Um, my earliest memory of being amazed uh, at water was probably about 18 months, two months, two years old, uh, living in Atwater, California. My dad was in the Air Force, and our dishwasher failed and flooded the kitchen. And it was, I still have such a distinct memory of the joy of splashing inside my house <laughs> and I'm sure I made my mom really <laughs> mad <laughs> wasn't what was supposed to be happening right then and she had to be concerned and it's going to ruin the floors and <laughs> and I was just just in awe of of the fact that water was there and and it's really as, as I thought back it's it's really my first strong conscious memory of the miracle of water and uh, I after the short time there in, in Atwater California which is near Modesto it's in the Central Valley just right near Yosemite uh, and I'm sh I know my parents brought me to Yosemite and my sister and brother and and so I'm sure we saw the massive waterfalls there um, but my dad uh, needed to get out of the service and he, he was a, he was going to be a lifer a career officer and he he went up to uh, the Lake Tahoe area and I think that changed him <laughs> the career you know was was no longer what he thought it was and it was time to 
to go to beauty, really. And that blessing of being able to live near that lake has truly been a blessing for my consciousness, for my the strength of my body, for for my understanding of the world. Um, I call it one of the sacred hearts, sacred water hearts of, of the planet. Um, it's it's I think about 1,600 feet deep, and it's pure snow melt. It's pure water. Um, we've had to fight for its purity. Um, we've been losing clarity because of the motor boats, the gasoline and algae begins to grow. And, and I've seen this in my lifetime. When I got there, you could go out on a boat and see the boulders 200 feet down. The water was so clear. And sort of my second strong moment was learning how to water ski on these great big wooden plank water skis. I was a very tiny child, like very tiny. And so I'm standing on these water skis and the boat's going along and I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. I'm so proud of myself because I was better than my older sister in terms of staying up longer and they just kept going and I was on these water skis going along until suddenly the boat stalled and stopped. And I'm standing, it's a 17, it's a 72 mile around lake. I think it's 12 miles across the short way or maybe 12 miles a long way. And I'm standing on the water and, and the boat is over there. And I, again, it's just an indelible memory of trusting the water and feeling the water let me know I was being cared for. And, and that, you know, that water is really, really, really cold. <laughs> Getting the water being a skinny little thing, you know, hypothermia can hit really quick. And, and there was just this incredible feeling of being cared for that, and I wasn't, wasn't afraid. And I was a pretty fearful child. So I didn't freak out and I just stood there. And it felt like a, you know, religious experience. And uh, all throughout my life living in, I, I grew up as a skier. And so I was riding gravity upon the ocean laid on the mountains and very consciously from a very early age i knew what that core truth and what that meant and what i could learn from it and would have dreams about skiing on water you know and the whole water skiing thing but it was it was more liquid like like i was surfing on the mountain um and so water's always been a theme and we had a canyon um, that was undeveloped. And again, we had to fight to keep it undeveloped. And my mother was a, was a guardian at the gate there. Um, and it was called Shirley Canyon. And there's a beautiful river that went through it. And, and that was my haven. And I would go there again fairly early by myself, climbing the rocks and, you know, getting myself into trouble that nobody knew about and I never told my mother about. <laughs> and again, just the communion, the ability to commune. So I don't think I ever fell into water amnesia. And it was about seven years ago, Deborah, um, in alignment with, with your process, um, mm -hmm. that I really actively started um communicating the water message to to people in my world and 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 thinking about uh the esoteric aspects of it um in 2004 um i have a dear friend who's my wake up sister uh with the name winsong and she lives in southern oregon 
and I had gone up to visit her and she she was having a, a like a camp out they call it the the good medicine family gathering and probably about a hundred people that show up and all camp out on their land and um uh, one of the women there was grandmother Agnes of the 13 indigenous grandmothers and this was two years before the indigenous grandmothers um, began their formation as 13 grandmothers and she um, I I walked across the field and she said hey you and called me over and sat me by her side and basically assigned me the role of caring for her, getting her food, you know, and it was such an honor. And in, in, in exchange, she started teaching me about water as, as a, as a living being, as a spirit. Um, and, uh, I assigned myself the role of, of, uh, water grandmother in, in training. <laughs> And so I've, that's, it's, it really is my spiritual path. I've, I've been a seeker since early on when I was nine, we went to Europe and my grandmother was very Catholic, um, encouraged me to come with her as her companion. The other two weren't at all interested. And so, um, I was pretty obsessed with saints at that point. And so together we, we walked through the, and I don't, re you know, I remember a few ca castles and, and cathedrals, but really what I connected with was um, Fatima and Lourdes, where these young women um, were visited by the Virgin Mary, and the water of this experience became holy, and um, and and I completely that became my my religion was this water miracle and then we went to rome and and the pope we had some water and the pope blessed it so i came home with holy water and <laughs> so i think i've been been doing blessings for a lot longer than i can remember so that's kind of my my story and and the thing that you know, every once in a while the water will drop in a really clear specific message and you know just that that there is only one water on earth it's all connected and it's it's the bond it's the hydrogen bond that makes water what it is and and that is what what binds us is is that hydrogen bond within our own bodies um and and once that thought came, then then the next thought, and so all of life on Earth is the infinite creative expression of water. Um, so that that's sort of the was the birth of loving waters with Shelley was to to bring these simple core truths out into the world so we can start sharing them because really when you know when we speak to other people that aren't thinking in this way and aren't living in this way, the water inside their body is what gets it and communicates that to the cells. And there's a quickening inside of them that if they're even a slight bit thirsty for truth, <laughs> they'll go, Oh my goodness, yes. It's that's so simple. Right. It's in, in plain sight. There it is. And really it's and I just thought about this today. It's like the next the next component here is that really what's what's listening is the water inside of itself, recognizing itself. And and once we really get into reciprocity with water, and it it, it changes everything. It really does in terms of our perception as humans, as a species. And I don't think we have very far to go in terms of critical mass, because as soon as we reach critical mass with this kind of thinking, 
with with the you know the the water bubbles that are us humans um it's it's the healing is going to go very quickly I, I feel that very strongly so that's a bit of my story in a nutshell thank you for asking thank you for giving me this moment to share. yeah thank you for sharing i i you know, I, I do feel like the water in everyone is listening. And I had the, one of the places I stay as I wander around is actually on a private lake. And it's actually, I discovered later that it's actually a drinking water source for a, a town uh, east of Boulder. And so I go in there and I I do water healing work in there. and. I think setting a lot of intention and vibration in every single piece of water that you encounter, I completely agree. Water talks to itself and water yeah. is one and yeah. all the water in the world is one. So, oh, I just got water shivers when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to sign off here pretty soon. All right. Yes, an, it's, it's another just, piece uh, I have to do. So thank um, you all so much. And what, one of the things I really love is is the synchronicity that comes with living within water. Um, just recently, I I started taking a screenwriting cor- course to learn how to be a screenwriter and write screenplays um, to tell the water story. It's like okay. How do we learn with with media? So, and it just so happens that there's a fellow on there who is a, a water faithful. It lives in Minnesota, um, works with structuring water, and has taken the most beautiful 400 times magnification microscopic photographs of water molecules, and I'll, I'm going to be posting it with his permission. Oh, how cool! Um, oh, I would love to see and that. And it just shows it so clearly, you know. It it just it shows the bonds. It shows the connections. It's really phenomenal. Yeah. I just want to say I I have to jump in real quick and say I I just had kind of a complete circle happen a few weeks ago because Shelley Darling ended up here in Boulder in the hospital. That's and right. So we actually we actually got to meet. I got to spend some time with her. Oh, and, so you're um, Eagle. Yes, I'm Deborah Eagle. Yeah. Right. I, I, yeah. 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 So anyway, I just I just wanted to pitch that in because I know both of you. I'm pretty certain both of you know her. Oh yes. yeah. Um, Charlie well, too. I think. Charlie and yes. I and Shelley were together the like two days before she had had her heart thing. We were all right. in New England. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. So well, thank I was. You for the, being there for I, I was. I, yeah, I was the the landing, holding the space here for her. So thank it's you so funny much. how things yeah, work thanks. out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, it was so my pleasure. True. Yeah, and yeah. That's the same for sure. synchronicity, right? It is, and it's mm-hmm. yeah, water talking to itself. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Beautiful. My pleasure. Well, listen, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you have a closing thing you do. I'd love to be part of it or be here um, for a yeah. minute longer. Um, I don't Charlie, have too much are longer, you though. Are fairly happy with your words? Do you have more words to put in there at all? Oh, I'm sure some words will come through somewhere. Um, the water will bring them through, as uh, as always. Um, thank you, Deborah, for being here. Thank you for inspiring um, both of us and anyone who listens. And I, I just love that water talks to itself. It really is such an important um, part of our remembering. So in closing our circle, our small gathering, we know that outside of this field of resonance that we've held tonight, uh, for the water. The ripples will reach and, and move into the hearts and minds of those who hear the replays. And even if not, the act of our presence here together, uh, uttering from our hearts and our source, our waterfalls within us, 
uh, the truth of who we are and our expression of our love for the water. It has made a change that will expand and expand and expand and ripple, ripple out like the one drop and all of the ripples in that quiet pond. And so I ask each of you tonight to become that one drop of water and deepen your relationship and know that there is nothing more than one drop of water. That in that one drop, everything is present. There's no need to seek. There's no need to want. There's no need to be disturbed. It is perfect. It is the hydrogen bonding with the oxygen. And that is the life that each of us embrace through the water. I thank you all for being here. I thank you all for listening. I thank you for sharing. And I know that each of us will be enriched by this gathering here tonight. And we share this love with all of you in the, around the world. And as it is said, so let it be done. Aho. Aho. And blessings to yes. everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deborah. And thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Shelley. Yes. All righty.